Somewhere over the rainbow, pigments fly, and all our feathered work there will go to die. Welcome. I am Painted Raina, your friendly neighborhood witch of what the f- Not to be confused with the Wicked Witch or the one that got crushed under the house. Welcome to the Wizard of Oz collab. I will be your guide today and I am taking you down a detour on the Yellow Brick Road. So, stay tuned, my little pretties. <laughs> This is a cradled wood round that I picked up at Michael's. And the first step is black gesso. This is Liquitex. The gesso is dry. The next step is I'm going to mix some of this little piggy in Galaxy into some polycrylic and then put a layer on top because the idea I want is just kind of like a nice sparkly black base, not a flat black base. And this will be the best way to do it. I keep some polycrylic in a squeeze bottle. And it's Galaxy. It is black, but it's got like all the colors of the rainbow if you look real close. It's very pretty. Kind of matches my nail polish. I'm just going to stir this up and then brush it on. I will let it dry for at least three hours and then we'll move on to the next segment. And we are back. My board, which I, uh, almost had an accident there. It's all dry. I've got my nice shiny coat of Galaxy mixed with varnish. And then uh, once it was dry, I took some blue painter's tape and I taped it all around the edges, ensuring a good seal, um, patting it down real hard. And then down on the bottom here, so all the excess resin will be really easy for me to get off when I am done with this. So you'll remember the sides are painted black or just in black as well. So. We're ready. Today I'm pouring with Art Resin. Art Resin's fabulous. It is my favorite resin for doing art. I mean, hence the name. So, that's mixed. And here I have one cup of resin. <clears throat> like a good girl, and not, you know, a rebel like I am. I am putting my gloves on. And the very first step is just putting some resin on the top. We'll start with this. See how far this gets us. I'm gonna take this digital heat gun and I'm just going to soften this. Uh, heat softens resin, makes it easier to flow and pop some of the bubbles. It's important to note I should be wearing a respirator, but since I am filming and I am vain, I am not. So I do have a couple of windows open for cross circulation. And as soon as I'm done with this, I'm gonna go put it in a different room of my house that's closed off to cure so minimal exposure to um, what is really honestly very low fumes anyway. But be safe, don't be sorry, wear a respirator, don't be like me. All right, I am going to smooth this out. I see I've got an errant cat hair in it, which is, you know, pretty typical in my house. And already this galaxy is starting to pop. It's quite pretty. I'm testing that I have enough resin on my surface to be able to blow some colors out when I am prepared. So I'm going to let it set for about 20 minutes. And during that time, I'm gonna mix up the colors that I'm gonna use on this. I feel like Mr. Rogers right now. Am I talking like Mr. Rogers? If I am, I'm sorry. I am wearing a cardigan, like, but you know, it could be worse, right? So I'm gonna set a timer, 20 minutes. I'm in my kitchen, so I just use the one on my oven. And I notice I need a toothpick to get out some cat hair, so I'm gonna do that too. Cat hair is the nemesis of resin artists the world over. But I love my cat, so I just put up with it. I mean, who doesn't love their cat, right? Uh, I think I lost it. Here it is. Maybe. Fun stuff. Fishing for cat hair. Fishing for fur. That sounds a little dirty. Now that I say that out loud, I should not have said that out loud. Please plug your children's ears. Okay. That's good. Just 
it's fine, there's some bubbles, but I'm gonna be blowing it out with a heat gun again in 20 minutes. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it. I am going to move it to the side a little bit and now we're going to get to some color mixing. So I've got a couple of these little uh, silicone cups. Um, they're about an ounce. Uh, some of them I have overused and they have met the ends of their functional lives. So uh, <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to use some like other things too, just because I'm out. These are the last I had. I've got a little bit of uh, white residue in here from the last time I did some resin waves. So I'm gonna use some painter's tape and just, uh, uh, once I get this glove off, hard to do with gloves. It's inside out and I'm just using this to help peel some of it off. Exciting times, people. Super exciting. I had a really hard time coming up with a concept for this idea. A concept for this collaboration. <laughs> yeah. And wow, I'm I'm exhausted. So, um, I was talking to my husband. I said, John, help me out with this. Like, there's a couple of scenes where I'm like, okay, I could maybe work with that color palette. And there's a couple of scenes where I'm like, I would rather jump off a cliff than work with that color palette, which honestly tended to be most of the movie and John immediately lit up and he said oh I know what you should do and I'm like what tell me please I'm like don't know what to do and he said and he was wrong he was wrong but <laughs> I still like the idea he said well Wizard of Oz is the first movie that's was in color so it started in the sepia tone black and white and then went to color and I think he's right about that part. But he said, the first thing that goes into color are the ruby slippers. I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, that's a great idea. So I'll do like black, white, sepia and the ruby slippers. So I went and I watched the clip and I was like, oh no, she opens the door and everything's colorful. But I still really like the idea of the black, white and ruby slippers, which is actually like the shoes of the Wicked Witch of the East when she gets crushed by the house. So that is my inspiration today. Varying a little bit off the yellow brick road, if you know what I mean. Okay, clean enough. As I babble away, I'm going to put my gloves back on and I'm going to pour some resin into these little cups. And I just put my arm right in the resin. Don't do that. I don't need too, too much because I'm kind of doing like more of accent colors. And then for the last one, I'm just using a, uh, what was a painting cup and I scraped the paint out of it and it was dried. What am I doing with my leftover resin? Well, I've got some other things here that during the 20 minutes I'm going to give a top coat to. I did mix a full cup. I certainly don't need a full cup just for this uh, project. All right, we've got some popsicle sticks that I forgot to get, and we're gonna mix up some colors. I like to reuse, reduce, recycle, you know, all that good stuff. So these are all lumpy and gross, and, and it's fine. Everything's fine. So, I'm going to be using High Tide Piggy Paste. High Tide Piggy Paste is really great for making like ocean waves and everything. So though this is not an ocean wave piece, I want some of the texture and effects of this, so I am going to use it regardless. All right, I don't need a whole lot, just kind of like the head of the popsicle stick. I'll just mix that in. All right, that's mixed up. Let's seal that. Next thing I'm going to add for some of my sepia tone is this little piggy in latte which is like a really nice latte or sand color, not like the white haven sand color. This is a little like Mississippi sand that I am used to up here on the Mississippi River. So I'm going to pick some of this and put it in. I'm, I was a little heavy handed on that. Whoops, did not need that much. Could have done about like a third of that, honestly, maybe even a quarter. So whoops, that's okay, it's just, or pigmented. Stir that up nicely. And I'm going to use lemon sorbet, also by TLP, this little piggy. Lemon sorbet is like a light lemon yellow color. However, uh, it tends to look kind of gold. So um, that's pretty perfect for the sepia. Got the popsicle stick in here. 
I'm not going to use quite as much. Don't need to be so heavy handed. Stir that in nicely. Curious to see how lemon sorbet will look over black. I haven't actually, I don't think I've poured it over black before. Definitely not in resin, so this is new. They are inherently transparent, the mica pigments. So it'll definitely show the black through the deep dark, you know, but that's okay because that's part of sepia. It's like black and white, but it's black and tan, which actually sounds pretty good. I should make myself one. Not that I have the ingredients, but it sounds good regardless. I'll just pretend. It'll be a glass of white wine. I'll just call it a black and tan, right? <laughs> make your own fun. And all right. And just because I'm feeling a little bit adventurous, I'm going to add a secret ingredient to the lemon sorbet. You can't see this because it's completely covered in ink because I had an ink spill. It was like the Exxon Valdez of my kitchen counter. But this is alcohol ink. This is Jacquard Pinata, uh, Pinata Brass. And I'm just going to drop a couple of drops into the lemon sorbet for some extra gold. I've put in three drops of that, so we'll see how that works. I have no idea. Your guess is as good as mine. And last but not least, we are making ruby slippers. So I am using T.O.P. in maraschino, which is a gorgeous, bright, bright red with some sparkle in it. And to that, I am going to add some Renvio holographic red glitter. I'm going to stir just the maraschino in first. And once that's stirred in, then I will add glitter. I'm gonna do two real healthy scoops to start, see how that does. It's looking good, but it needs just a dash more. I feel like it's Christmas. Red, red glitter? I never used red. Such a blue girl. Blue and purple and teal. Oh my. Haha. -ha. See what I did there? All right. We're all set. So I'm going to uh, be back with you in just a, a few moments here and we will get to the art. All right. 20 minutes is up. I have got my colors ready to go and I am going to start boring and we're going to see what happens with this scene where. You know, effectively, it's the Wicked Witch of the East getting crushed under a house without all the other colors. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly, like, the bright red seems a little apropos for that. Yeah, all right. So, I know I say so, so much, right? It's like I try not to say it, but then I say it more when I think about it. Got an extra cup here for my popsicle sticks when I'm not using them. Another word to the wise, when you're pouring resin like this, it's always good to have some molds nearby to throw your excess resin in so you're not wasting a bunch, because resin's expensive, we all know that. All right, here's my white. This is my high tide piggy paste. And I'm going to just uh, kind of, I don't know. I'm not like too set on a design here. I'm just kind of giving it a little bit of chaos. You know, kind of like the tornado was chaos and Oz is chaos and everything about it is chaos. And I'm going to pour on these colors kind of in some stripies. This is my latte. Big old log. I'm going to add a little more white. I'm not too worried about the globs or streakiness or anything because the heat gun will take care of a lot of that. Could be good. A little bit of lemon. Yeah, a little tiny bit left of latte. Now I'm going to scrape these down. And we're going to fast forward through this part because it's really boring. And all right, before we turn the red on, turn the red on, somebody call Roxanne. Just 
kidding. Uh, we're going to blow this out with a heat gun first. I'm going to leave my gloves on, so I'm just getting a paper towel to surround the handle and protect it. Sounds a little weird. We'll see what happens. Okay. Okay, this might be more a little bit like Jupiter than Oz, but hey, that's that's what we're here to do, right? We're here to like make art and try things. So I'm going to now add the ruby slippers. All right, I'm gonna blow it a little bit more with the heat gun and we're gonna let it cure and see how this all turns out. Pardon me, that is my cat being fed and I need to give him an insulin shot. My sweet little munchkin's diabetic. Munchkin, see what I did there? Well, I'm not really sure how I feel about this, but we're going to go with it, so I'll be back to show you the cured results. Lions, tigers, and bears? Oh my! Well, except for the tiger, because I killed it. Sometimes fluid art does not turn out the way you want, and uh, this is one of those scenarios for me. This, to me, Looks like roadkill, yellow brick roadkill. I have plans for it though. I do have plans, but not for this video. This is going to be a to be continued kind of thing and you're just gonna have to check back sometime in the future. Can't tell you when, but sometime. We'll get around to it someday or I will just um, stare at this and pretend that it goes away in the middle of the night. Maybe there's like a, a fairy that comes around and gathers up your really bad art and like takes it and poof into the universe. Yeah, I sound like the wizard, don't I, right now. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a balloon to catch and everything. You know, I was going to redo this and my husband said, no, don't, because people need to see that things don't always turn out. And he's right. He was right again. This time he was actually right both times. The moral of the story is, if you accidentally kill a tiger, save it for later, make something better out of it. I am so happy to be part of this Wizard of Oz collab and I hope that you stick around for the next videos in this collab because everybody is fabulous and did not slaughter tigers like moi. My name is Painted Raina, the friendly neighborhood witch of what the f- Not to be confused with the Wicked Witch or the one that got crushed under the house. Um, they're just distant relatives. I hope you've enjoyed this very strange detour down the uh, yellow blood-stained brick road. If you have gotten a kick out of my incredibly strange sense of humor, please hit like and subscribe. Check me out online if you want some rad homemade earrings like these Somewhere Over the Rainbow earrings, which are also perfect for Pride Month. Check out my website. I appreciate it. I'll be back more regularly in the future at some point dealing with some family stuff. So until that point, I'll see you around. Take care and don't get crushed by any houses and definitely don't kill any more tigers. I already done it. Cheers for now, and may all your artwork be awesome. <laughs> there we go. There's my Wicked Witch laugh. I'm awkward.